Hello everybody and welcome back to the third video of our introductory part. Right now what we want to do is install our Kali Linux machine and get it to actually work. Now this is a process that can take a little bit of time since the installation process takes around 30 to 40 minutes on average. But we need this is something that we need to do in order to actually have our hacking environment set up. So what you want to do is start up your VirtualBox, so just click on the double icon right here. If you didn't install VirtualBox, make sure to check out previous video in order to see how to do that. Uh, this installation file, you do not need it anymore, you can just delete it and start up your VirtualBox. So right now, we can see that right here we have our Python ethical hacking machine. Uh, basically, all you have to do right now is actually add this ISO file to the virtual machine storage before actually starting up the machine with this button. So how can we do that? We can do that by selecting the virtual machine and then going to the settings right here. So right here you will see a bunch of different settings for our virtual machine, such as system settings, display storage, audio, network, serial ports, USB and so on and so on. So let us actually go uh, through these settings right here in order to see if everything is correct. So this is something we specified in previous video. This right here is not really important to us. On the system part, you can change your RAM memory if you want once again. If you think you gave it too much or too little, you can change it right here. The processor part is something that we didn't see in the previous video. Uh, basically, this part right here allows you to actually give your virtual machine more CPU cores. For example, it will by default leave your uh, machine on the one CPU core. But you can, for example, if you have a really good PC with like six or eight cores, you can just give it four or three or anything, any number you want. Uh, but make sure to not give it too much as it will leave a little for your main PC. So what I will do, I will just leave it on one. And this right here is basically the percentage of core being used for your virtual machine. So if you just leave it on 1 and drop this to 50%, for example, what this will do, the virtual machine will only use the 50% of your one core, which is not enough. Or maybe it even is, I never tried it. Uh, what I will do is I will leave one core to be used by our virtual machine, and I will give it 100% of power from that core. The acceleration is something that we do not care about, so make sure to check this if this is okay. This one as well. And next thing we want to do is go to the storage. Here we will add our Kali Linux ISO file. So what we want to do is first of all delete the empty attachment right here. So remove it, remove, and under the controller IDE right here you will have this disk with a plus right here. All you want to do right now is actually just uh, uh, click on this. So click on the disk with a plus. It will ask you do you want to choose disk or leave empty. We want to choose the disk that we want to use. And what this disk is, is basically it is our uh, ISO file that we want to run as an operating system. So if you can't see it right here, which you most likely won't be able to see it, just click here on the add button right here. It will lead you to your explorer where you can navigate to the desktop or wherever you save this ISO file and select it. So it is right here. I will click here open and I will double click it right here. As we can see uh, right now we have the Kali Linux 2019.1 AMD 64-bit version .iso. Once you select all of that uh, you can click here OK. The network part of settings we will cover later on after the installation but for now on we are good to go so just click here OK. Once you finish that you uh, you are good to go and you can actually start up your virtual machine running Kali Linux. So just click here on this green arrow right here which says start. Uh, it will open up this window which is our virtual machine. As it says right here VirtualBox version 6.0 and all we want to do right now is actually sel select either one of these two options. So graphical install or install. Now you can proceed to go with any of these two you want. Basically they are the same, just the graphical install is a little bit prettier. But I am used to going with the regular installation, so I will just click here enter on the install. Now before we continue, you might have noticed, let me just enlarge this so you can see it better. You might have noticed that 
we don't actually, uh, we can't actually navigate with our mouse anymore. So in the installation process, you can navigate only with the uh, arrows and with the enter. So click here, either graphical install or regular install. And this will start the process of installation of Cal Linux for us. Now, during this process, it will ask a bunch of questions, which I will make sure to show you what you need to answer in order to get this to work correctly. So this is something that really is up to you. So you can select any language you want. I will just proceed here with the English. And the select your location is also up to you. Select your own location, or it doesn't even have to be your own location. I will just select your United States, even though I am not from the United States, I'm from Europe. And uh, this is the configuration of your keyboard. So this can be a little bit tricky if you're used to, for example, QWERTY part and not QWERT Z. So make sure to check that out before continuing. Or for example, if you have a different type of keyboard configuration, you can select it right here as there are a bunch of others as well. Uh, what I will do is I will go with the American English and this will finish up with the questions currently. Right now, as we can see right here, it is loading some additional components. So we will let this run. And hopefully our process of installation goes without any errors. Now, once again, if you encounter any errors, make sure to post a question and I will be gladly answering you uh, on your problem. So we can see configuring has finished. And right now it asks us configure the network. Please answer the, uh, please enter the host name for this system. The host name is a single word that identifies your system to the network. If you don't know what your host name should be, consult your network administrator. If you're setting up your own home network, you can make something up here. Now this is uh, completely up to you what name you will specify right here. I will just leave it as Kali. Uh, basically, this is just something that will pop up in your terminal every time you open it. So you can just select, type here anything you want. I will just go with Kali. So navigate with your arrows to continue and press here enter. It will ask you to configure the domain name as well, which we do not need at the moment. So right now I will just leave this empty and click continue here as well. So right now it will ask you for your root password. Now here you basically type any password you want, make sure to remember it or else you will not be able to log in into your root account on Cal Linux machine. So just type here anything you want. In my case, I will just use test one, two, three, four. As we can see, if I go on to the show password in clear, oops. Yeah, arrows don't seem to work. Okay, so here it is. You need to press spacebar in order to show password in clear. So test one, two, three, four, and I will go to the continue where it will ask me to actually re-enter the password. So re-enter once again, test one, two, three, four, and go to the continue. The configure the clock. So basically this is also optional. I mean, you do not really need to select uh, your own time zone. You can just go with anything you want, but if you want to have the correct time and everything correctly, you can just specify the correct settings. So I'll just go here with Eastern. And let's see what will pop up next. I believe right now it might actually start the, oh, oh, there is the partition disk. I forgot about this part. So all you want to do right now is actually just click here, enter or enter on the guided use entire disk. Now the encrypted disk we will not install since it is not really needed for this course. So we will just go with the guide use entire disk. Click here, enter. It will select disk to partition and you will most likely have only this one disk that you selected, which is around 30 gigabytes as you remember uh, when I specified it. So just click enter on that one. And for the this part right here, you want to select the all files in one partition. As it says right here, it is recommended for new users. And if you're watching this video, you're most likely a new user of this. So you want to go with this so it doesn't present us any other problems. So just select here all files in one partition, click enter. And right here, click finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. What this will do is it will ask us once again if we want to, if we are sure we want to write the changes to the disk, as it says right here, if you continue, the changes list below will be written to the disks. Now, don't worry, this is only referring to your hard disk that you specified in the creation of virtual machine, which is only 30 gigabytes if you specified it like me. So this will only change the 
or write changes to that section of your hard disk. So write changes, yes, and this will actually start the installation itself. So what we will do, we will let this run and I will see you as soon as a question pops up or anything that we need to answer in order to continue the installation process. So here we are at our first question that popped up, which is the configuration of the package manager. Now it says right here, a network mirror can be used to supplement the software that is included on the CD-ROM. This may also take newer versions of software available. Now what you want to go right here is select here, yes, use on it for mirror. So click here on yes. And the next part right here is the HTTP proxy information, which we do not really need to specify. So right here, we can only just continue without typing in anything right there. Now, what this will do is it will actually configure the APT, as it says right here, for a few moments, and then uh, soon, uh, I believe, it will prompt us with the grub bootloader question, where we actually want to select yes and install the uh, grub bootloader to the master boot record. Now, don't worry, I will read it out loud once the question pops up, and I will uh, also tell you what you need to do. And I believe right after that, that will be the last question that will pop up and the process of the installation of Kali Linux will finish then and we can put up into our new Kali Linux machine. So let's just wait for this configuration of the APT to finish and then we will continue. So let's wait for this. So here it is. I believe right now it will prompt us with the question. Not really sure why the screen is blue, but hopefully it will go away soon and we will get our question prompted. So here it is, instantly grab bootloader, retrieving file one out of three, and I believe right now it will prompt us with that question I was talking about. And here is the question. So. Uh, you can read it if you want, or I will read it right now, as it says, it seems that this new installation is the only operating system on this computer. If so, it should be safe to install the grub bootloader to the master boot record of your first hard drive. Now, you might be asking, well, this isn't really our first installation operating system. You have your main Windows machine, for example, system. But this is not referring to that. It does not know that it is run as a virtual machine, so basically... Uh, for this virtual machine, this is the first operating system, and we want to actually install the uh, grub bootloader to the master boot record. So right here, uh, select here yes, and press enter. And all we want to do right here is basically device for the bootloader location, scroll down to the slash dev slash SDA, and click here enter as well. Now this will continue, or basically this will finish the installation of grub, grub bootloader. And this will also, also finish the installation of our Kali Linux machine. This is the last part, as it says right here, finishing the installation. Now, what it might actually do is it might prompt us with something like unplug your USB drive the, after a certain point of this installation. But we really do not want to do anything there since it is referring to anyone installing this operating system on a main PC as a main operating system because they would most likely be doing it via USB drive with the burnt disk image on that USB drive. But since we are not doing that at the moment, and since we are not really installing a real main operating system, instead we are installing a virtual machine operating system, we will just proceed with that question if we even get it prompted. So let's wait for this installation part to finish. And here it is, installation is complete, so it is time to boot into your new system, make sure to remove the installation media, we don't care about this, just click here continue, finishing the installation, and as soon as this finishes we will be able to start our Kali Linux machine. I believe this will not take more than a minute or two, so don't worry, the longest part of our installation has actually been finished already, which was the installation part itself, and this is just some additional packages it needs to install or configure in order for our Kali Linux machine to actually start. So here it is finished. Right now we are rebooting or booting into our Kali Linux machine. Right here you can just let this run by itself or you can press enter. It will load some of the components and it will start up our Kali Linux machine. Now I need to show you how you can log in since if this is your first time, which it most likely is, uh, 
you need to know the username and you will also need to know the password that you specified in the installation process so make sure to not forget that the username for the logging in into the root, root account in Cal Linux is basically just root so you just type under the username section root it will be the same for everyone and after that it will prompt you for a password where you actually just type the password that you specified in the installation process itself so right now we will wait for that uh, window to or basically for that login to get prompted to us and then we will specify everything we need in order to log in so he, this is the uh, login screen of the Cal Linux machine uh, you just type under the username root and under the password you just type basically the password that you specified in the installation which in my case it is test1234 press enter and it will prompt you with your desktop for your Cal Linux machine now I will not be explaining in details uh, the environment of Cal Linux itself since this course is not really aimed towards that so with a little bit of actually exploring uh, additional videos or additional parts of the internet you can actually find out a lot of great things about Cal Linux if you're new to it of course I will make sure to explain everything that we use and everything that we need in order to actually make our programs and also if you might notice right now since we are in the, at the login screen you might notice that our screen isn't really that big it is only squared to this part right here we want to make sure that our Cal Linux machine is full screen so we can get the full quality of this video and we do not need to really watch a small screen display so we will do, I will show you that in the next video uh, that is something that you should really do in order to get the best out of this installation so that would be about it as we can see right now we have our Cal Linux machine opened and I will show you how to make it full screen in the next video as well as some additional stuff you might need to do so hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I see you in the next lecture bye